Hi everyone, in this video I'm going through the steps to perform an underflow hinting calculation. Before viewing the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell to be notified of the new videos. Enjoy! Before we perform the underflow hinting calculation, there are some steps that must be taken. First step is to change the floor type to an underfloor heating type. To do so, we come to the room function and we access the room in which we're going to, to change the floor type. So we come to the tab basic data and in this case, we see here the floor type in which I have already um, inserted an underfloor heating type. But if it's not the case, we double click this entry and we access the product database and we select a floor type from the category on the floor heating. Okay. So the next step is taking under the building function. We come to the tab heating facilities and we must insert a target output for the on the floor heating type. So in this case, I will set 100%. And then we must select this target output uh, for the complete story or for the complete building. Next, because we have changed the floor type, we must uh, update the heat load calculation. And then we are able to perform the underfloor heating calculation. We do it under the underflow heating tab. The first step though is to insert a underflow heating type. We come in a manufacturer uh, field and we access the product database. In this case, I will select the staple system. Next, we're going to select an underflow heating manifold. So we click on the button new and we select a manifold type. In this case, important here is to uh, predefine the number of circuits. In this case, I will set a heating manifold with six circuits. So I'll click OK. OK. And I insert it in the model. I will insert in this case in the installation room and I press escape to get back to the dialog. The next step is to draw the underfloor heating area in the model. So I click on the draw button and in this case, I will insert the underfloor heating areas in all the rooms in which I have inserted the underfloor heating uh, floor type. So if I make a diagonal line like this and include the complete model, DDS CAD will automatically insert the, the areas in no rooms in which I have the underfloor heating type. So click here and I press enter. And as you can see, we have now an underfloor heating in the living room and in the bedrooms and in the bathroom. Now we'll press escape to get back to the dialog. What else I could do is to use the cutout function. So I click here in the cutout and I will remove this shower cabinet from, from the underfloor heating area. So I will make a diagonal line, press enter, and it has been removed. Now press escape to get back to the, to, to the dialog. Now, before we perform the, the calculation, let's see some options in the options button. We have the possibility to manually insert the supply temperature and temperature difference. But in this case, I will set DDSCAD to calculate the optimal supply temperature by activating this option. And we have all other options here that we could take in consideration. Now I'll click OK and I, will keep, uh, and I will click Calculate. We see here um, some important uh, information. In the column pipe distance, and we can also see the pipe length. If we move to the right, we can also see the actual output. We see in red the indication that uh, the actual output is not enough for the target output of this room. Uh, one possibility would be to optimize the system 
or in other case to use an additional heating facility. To show another feature, let's pretend that the selector room, which is the living room, have a windows, uh, a window facade on the left. This would require to have a higher temperature in this area. Just to show what could be done in this situation, we could use the option of split into and select this room. So we would have two, two areas in this case, so two circuits. If I get back to the dialog, I could select this area, double click here, and I would change the, the temperature to higher temperature. So if I click OK, we now see the indication in red in the model. And if we recalculate it, we see now that the pipe distance for this circuit or this area now is smaller than uh, the blue area on the right. All right, we also have the possibility to show these results in the model. To do so, I will apply and close this option. And I will use an intelligent text called part text to represent the results in the model. So I will select one of these areas and I will come to the function part text in which I have already the pre-defined text called on the floor heating. I will click and move to the area in which I want to insert it. So one here and also in the area on the left. And this is the input information if the designer would like to draw the real pipes for each circuit. If you like this video, share with your colleagues. If you have any questions or suggestions, put your comment below and we'll get back to you. Cheers!